what i can introduce now and maybe this is the point of the salon is to um also talk about how neighborhoods approaches some of this and what features of neighborhoods could be leveraged for algorithmic curation um and so to start things off i think there's two features about neighborhoods that are really relevant to today's conversations conversation i think number one we think of neighborhoods as an organizing principle for the distributed web um, mm-hmm. traditionally you had platforms which were you know the water coolers or where people gathered or met each other or engaged with them but the web3 or distributed architectures allow for a rejigging of that and we think there will be several attempts and maybe neighborhoods is one of those uh, and so we just want to push that curve or you know be one of the many attempts at figuring out what this new way in which we aggregate is um mm-hmm. and so we actively use reputation data to define what forms a membrane and how people discover each other within that membrane um mm-hmm. and so it you 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 could crudely say it's a group's culture which defines you know what creates a neighborhood like what's different mm-hmm. from you know what's the difference between Oliver's neighborhood and Sid's neighborhood they might be doing the same thing like they might be sharing the same memes or playing chess or whatever but what's different is you know the culture that they share the sense of humor they might share and the actual people mm-hmm. within it um yeah. and so 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 i think that's the first aspect of neighborhood that stands that that i think is worth exploring mm-hmm. and secondly you again touched on this briefly we don't have as many walled structures or silos in distributed web in the distributed web so you could actually see porting of information from one neighborhood to another pretty easily which mm-hmm. is really hard to do in platform architectures and i think there's something there that to me is you know it feels like that is the secret sauce that we could actively leverage because that to me means we don't actually need you know neighborhoods to necessarily run into the millions before any kind of algorithmic curation makes sense Um, yeah but they could be you know pretty small neighborhoods but are borrowing intelligence from each other um, mm-hmm. and so you almost have you know as opposed to top down centralized ai that's guiding you know an app you have a, a distributed web that's guiding an individual's interaction as they move from one neighborhood to another um and mm-hmm. that to me is interesting um and i think we will collectively discover what that is you know it could it could be neighborhoods it could be web3 we'll find yeah. out but there are some interesting themes there that are worth picking up because it's it almost to me models more real social situations like if i were to attend a dinner party hosted by oliver and yeah. let's say there's 50 guests it would be weird for you to be talking to me every minute asking me if i am feeling curated or if i'm feeling yeah. engaged <laughs> like that's weird but instead you know there's a certain template you set for that setting you know maybe there's a certain way in which we're sitting or introduced to each other or or you know the the way the shape is the space is designed and then we kind of bump into our own serendipitous encounters but i might also meet someone i go to the gym with i might also meet mm-hmm. someone i work with uh, and so we borrow or we carry our previous contexts into this one um and i think yeah. that to me like that carrying over or porting data from one situation to another is mm-hmm. worth exploring and unbundling um for distributed architectures um so yeah i would say these are two yeah. aspects of neighborhoods that that stand out for sure like i think the the porting porting your reputation data or just your data in general is super important and that's kind of what i thought was interesting about blue sky and, and uh, activity pub from the beginning in that they're they're trying to not only have you port your like your built up reputation and your likes and what have you but also the entire messaging history mm. so that you could uh, just interact with someone uh using one platform while they're using another platform in the same way that you with email interact with uh someone while using Gmail and the other person is using Apple Mail mm. but it's still the same kind of messaging history mm. but i i think just like uh yeah just likes and reputation and and that kind of stuff if you have that uh 
portable, um, including your social graph too, mm. that, that goes a long way, just that, mm. so that you don't have to, every time you go to a new dinner party, mm. start from scratch and build mm. up your reputation and you. Mm. So that would take a long time and it would kind of create this lock-in effect. Even if you can move between platforms, you'd still have this lock-in effect of like, oh, there's no point in going there because they have to start from scratch again. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, in collaborative filtering, you have this full start problem as you talk about, which is, you know, how do you do recommendations when there is no data? to start with um and this would kind of you know break through that in the sense that you, can, you already have a basis for creation wherever you go mm. um that you can that you can port so i'm 100 with you on that